Hello and welcome back to another episode of Words on Watches with me, Carrick Mackley, and me, Stephen Yambo. Uh, today we're going to be looking at some lovely vintage examples coming up in our next sale on October the 15th. The first watch to look at is Lot 231, which is a Rolex Submariner. Uh, the reference on this is 5508, and this one dates from 1962. It's the last model to feature the small uh, crown and also not have the crown guards. This is a beautifully aged example. The dial has gone tropical in places and has spidered and is really a lovely feature of the watch. Another rarity of the dial is the fact that it has four lines showing the depth rating of 100 metres, uh, 330 feet. And do you think that the spidering and the discoloration on the dial is something that detracts from the value or something that collectors steer towards? I think it's something that collectors really would go for. I mean, it's all original, it shows its age, and it's something that's so difficult, virtually impossible to replicate. Mm, it definitely does show the originality of it. And, um, you know, even though it's some signs of wear and tear in there, it's things that actually accentuate the um, look of the watch rather than uh, detracts from that. Very true. The bezel's got a lovely fade to it and it's still on its original riveted bracelet. I mean, it's in the cell with an estimate of 35 to 45,000 pounds. And I think it will have loads of interest and loads of inquiries on this piece. I agree. And if something like this was to come up now, um, and if it was to be reissued as a, a smaller model when uh, people like Rolex are kind of being built uh, bigger and bigger watches, um, do you think that it will do as well as it did back then or um, is it something that's kind of gone out of fashion now? I think there's still a demand for the smaller pieces. Okay. Uh, people are going towards the vintage pieces, the model after the 5512 and the 5513s, prices have increased dramatically on them because people are seeking that old, smaller, look of a Rolex. Mm. It's still got the Rolex DNA that carried on today, but has the smaller size, which some people just find it's easier to wear. Yeah. I know I do. I know, yeah, same here. I mean, it's hard to find modern watches these days that actually complement the wrist sizes that are under 40 mils. Um, so having more like that would be a nice little turn of events, True. Um, especially for the major brands. True. And talking of uh, size of watches, the next one up is well, yeah, we've got um, a lovely little piece uh, by Elangen Son. Um, it's a German World War II military wristwatch um, designed for pilots. Um, it's something that, uh, I mean, you, you can clearly see um, that the age and that this isn't something that people would be wearing as a, as a dress watch. It's something that was used as a, a navigational instrument uh, and a timing instrument. Um, some of the main features is the oversized crown here, which make it very easy when you're wearing flight gloves um, or any type of um, uh, clothing over the hands, you can turn that without any kind of difficulty. Um, the really clear dial and the large numerals uh, make it easy to read, um, especially when you just need to make quick calculations. Um, this is a type B dial. Um, these type of watches have two types of dial. Um, and this is the, as I say, type B variation, which has the um, minute track around the outside. Um, so this is uh, coming up uh, in our next sale uh, as lot 109 for 8,000 to 12,000 pounds. And it's definitely something that has a lot of history behind it. Um, I mean, the, these watches don't come up very often and um, it's definitely something that a collector of both watches and war memorabilia um, would do well to have in their collection. Um, an interesting thing about these types of watches is that they didn't actually feature the name of the producers on there. Um, this was to try and avoid any type um, of enemy figuring out where the distribution plants were um, and uh, trying to avoid them being bombed. Um, Unfortunately, this didn't work out very well for Lang and Son, which uh, had their factory bombed towards the end of the war. Um, these watches were made for the German military, the Luftwaffe. Um, and as I say, it is something that uh, it is definitely um, a collector's piece and uh, something that people would do well to, to collect if this is um, it's something that interests you. What do you think of that one? It's an amazing that it survived in such original condition. It looks 
shows its age, and it's a great, great survivor. I mean, we've had them in the past from Stoa, Lanco, uh, but it's nice to have one in from Langsong, a real premier brand that make unbelievably good quality watches today. Yeah, I mean, it's completely different to what they're producing today. Um, you know, now they're kind of revered for being elegant, um, you know, amazing uh, mechanical watches. Um, whereas these, you can see that they're just utilitarian and designed for one purpose. Yes, um, it's amazing that they kind of like went and done a job given a brief and the watch was perfect for that brief. Exactly. These big five um, powerhouses of German watch engineering definitely did their job. Um, and we can see from the inscription on the side um, that it is used as a navigational instrument um, for the pilots and that is a nice little feature of the watch itself. Again, I'm looking forward to that watch being in the sale and getting a lot of attention. Exactly. Next watch up is not a watch. It's actually a timer. Uh, this is by Hannard and dates from the late 1950s, early 1960s. The rarity with this is actually branded Ferrari as well, which was very, very unusual. It's believed these were made in very, very limited numbers. And again, it's in the auction at lot 311 with an estimate of six and a half to eight and a half thousand. But it's such a rarity, we could could go sky the limit on this one. Yeah, it's a it's a weird little piece, really. Um, I mean, it's, it's the first one I've seen myself, and uh, it seems to be a little bit of a rarity within the community of people that uh, are both interested in racing and um, timers, watches, clocks. Um, so it, it's something that's quite rare, and as you say, I think the price could soar on, on this. Um, as you say, it's, it's an interesting that it's got Ferrari on there, um, being something that would be would have been used in racing. Um, we know that Ferrari uh, first entered the, the Formula One championships uh, when it started in the 1950s. So I don't know the history behind it, but um, it, it'd be nice to think that this was used to time um, an event like that um, or, or used um, you know, with, within a racing uh, scene. Um, as we've got the complete package here, um, it can be used in a, a variety of um, situations. It can be fixed to clipboards, um, it can be fixed to uh, dashboards, um, it can be hung around the neck um, or just used freehand. Um, so there's there's lots of different ways of <laughs> wearing yeah, just that. Just giving it a go of the, kind of like the old days of when they used to do it and time using the buttons. Yeah. But, uh, this is a real unusual item from the golden days of racing. But, uh, Yep, yeah, looking forward to that doing exceptionally well in the auction. Yeah, fingers crossed. And um, as I say, it's lovely to have the complete package, um, you know, whether it be just the box um, or the uh, extra equipment that's with it. Um, they all add value and um, that's something that is definitely going to steer it uh, towards the, the people that like to collect these um, type of things. Um, okay, well, uh, that's it then. Um, for more details on these items and for both vintage and modern items coming up in our next sale, uh, please go to our website or follow us on social media to see everything that fellows are up to. Um, and that's it from us. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.